In the past two weeks, I've been forced out of my film company. My guy friend has kicked me out. I'm back sharing my house with my ex-wife and I've given away all my CDs and carnivorous, carnivorous, carnivorous. Now I kind of know what the word is, but I just can't say it. Plant connection, but that's really irrelevant that you had to give away all your plants. I mean, I know that's painful, I'm sure, but it's kind of irrelevant parts of the question. Today, ego manifested physically a whole tange of physical reminders of pain, but I'm watching the pain. What the fuck is going on? I don't know what the fuck's going on. What's the fuck going on, David? You are experiencing pain. Pain is arising, and more than likely, you really don't want that pain. And your ego is having a real old tantrum, and you're suffering. And that's okay. Just give it some space to arise. These things are painful, like losing your film company. A few few years ago, um, I wrote a script and I lost the copyright. I didn't lose the copyright of it, but yeah, I did. I got kicked out and lost the copyright of it. I didn't, I wrote it with, yeah. And that was painful. It is painful, these things. But I didn't quite tell that story accurately because I didn't want to expose anybody or anything, so forget my story. I can't really take, tell it. Um, but yes, that was very painful. And so I can imagine losing your film company is very painful. And your girlfriend kicked you out and you're now with your ex-wife. And you've lost all these things. And basically you're suffering. And there's two things you can do. You can either sit in it, so you can just go and lay on the bed or sit outside in the garden or sit on the sofa and just allow the feelings to arise, just to be there. The other thing that you can do is actually investigate where the feelings are in your body and um, where they derived from in your past, whether it be from this lifetime or lifetime before, and just look and, um, and give that space and sort of name it and see what's happening. So if you're feeling a lot of fear that you've lost everything and that you don't know what your future will hold, then maybe it's in the sacral chakra and you can just like name that and put some attention there and remember previous times that you got afraid like when you were a kid or like connect it to to other times that's happened other relationships and just see how it's the same feeling in all of those um examples you get the same thing when when people abandon you or leave you get the same fear so just name it and give it some space and when you're ready, you've got to give it space first. This might take weeks or months to allow it space to be there and to feel it. This isn't about avoiding. For you then, this is healing. And this is about um, changing the energy of the chakra. And then when you're ready, you begin to um, say what it is you actually want. And you can just name it. Like you want someone to come in and love you. You want someone to come and protect you. You want your parents to um, to be there for you or whatever it is. You like support. You want support. You want help. You want safety. You want a better job. Whatever it is, anything that is positive, just begin to say it from that place. And then begin to feel that chakra expand and open up. But only do that stage when you're beginning to feel it expand and open up. It's the healing stage. But first of all, you have to accept it and you have to get to the bottom of it. You have to know what that chakra is avoiding and what it's resisting and relate it to your life. Like see the pattern in your life of that feeling. And then when you're ready, you get it into the more healing energy. And then you do this practice. You spend time pulling that energy into positivity. Like, a, like it goes into pain and then you pull it back into positivity of what it is that you want. Um... And you can do that with all your chakras. And this is a very, this is healing. And this isn't personal. So some people are like, yeah, but it's the personal self. You've got to ignore the story and just put your attention into consciousness. And to me, I don't see it like that. I see that the personal self, this self is held as energies in the body and um, stories inside the body. And there's main energy centers in which they're focused. It happens all over the body. So you can have a story in your shoulder, in your elbow, in your wrist, in your legs. 
um, but they're held in the main chakra centers, so the seven chakra centers. And that's not a personal thing. It's not like there's a personal self held in your body. You have memories and traumas held into your body. And when you're waking up, they begin to get released from the body. They won't all disappear. You'll get new ones. It's just part of it. But you'll begin to even out and balance them out. The separate self isn't that. The separate self is an energy which says, that is who I am. And that's who's experiencing the world. That's the lie. That's not who you are. Energy which claims these traumas or these habits or the conditions that says that's me and I'm a separate entity looking out of the body. And you're not a separate entity looking out of the body. You're wholeness now experiencing. You're this massive space. And in that, there's a vessel called this body. And, um, and the reason that I teach the healing of the body, and it sounds like I'm teaching through doership, but I'm not actually, because there is no doership. There is no me prescribing to you. There is only life happening. And I'm describing something that can happen in the David machine. And whether that happens is down to life. It's down to God's will as to the way it happens. Just like if I were to teach you how to ride a horse, like um, you could still do that and you wouldn't think, oh, it's the personal self. It's just healing for the body. And that healing for the body doesn't lead you to non-duality because you're already in non-duality. It's a different subject. But I bring it up because often when you're hearing this subject, it can't be heard because you're so identified with these past pains and with these stories and with these traumas in the body. And so what I do is just when somebody's really traumatized in it, it's not that I do it so they can become enlightened in the future. I do it out of compassion because it's a way of releasing that energy there. And then non-duality will be heard when it's heard. Like you keep on repeating it and you bring it back to non-duality and you keep seeing that those feelings aren't um, what keeps me suffering. They're, they're simply pain or pleasure. What keeps me suffering is a belief that it is me. Um, you keep hearing that and eventually non-duality will occur when it's ready and when it's time. And this whole idea of you getting to enlightenment is just a sol solar plexus dysfunction. Like it's this longing in the solar plexus for achieving something, this hope. And it's actually a dysfunction, it's irrelevant. But out of compassion, I offer these other um, examples of ways of dealing with the emotional body. Because often people are stuck in the world of the emotions and even though they keep moving their attention back to nothing, back to nothing, back to consciousness, which is also a great practice for the mind, it's not free in the body of those traumas, that dread that you wake up with or the nightmares that you're having at night or the, the discomfort when you see your family, whatever it is. Like pulling yourself out of it is not going to, to get rid of that. And, and moving yourself to consciousness or to I am is a practice. I'm not dismissing it and saying, don't do it. I think it's beautiful to do that. But what I am saying is that who is the one that you believe is going to put their attention into oneness and then be able to do that for the rest of their life? And that's what enlightenment is. It's beyond that. It's beyond the one that's putting your attention into um, the moment because there's something that's experiencing that happening. So who you are is prior to that is much bigger than that. But that doesn't mean don't do it. 